The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Tamina, blogger of the blog around the OAA. Um, also one of the hosts of Between Terminus and also the host of um, Last Week Brain Cells on Northern Neighborhood Television. Uh, I'd like to welcome those hearing us on the local voice on SoundCloud and also those watching on um, on um, Orient Neighborhood Television. Um, a lot to look at this week. Um, obviously, um, we're going to talk. Um, we got some football news to break. Obviously, the um, coaching situation at Royal Oak, we're going to go more in depth around that. And also a lot of basketball over the week um, to go with that. We also have our sports ticker up as well. Um, you know, of course, um, we had the sports ticker last week. Um, you know, checking out if you want somebody want to look at um games for your own own mind. You know, you know you can take a look at it. It's on our sports ticker. Um, a lot to look at, obviously. Um, you know, from the basketball world, also from the um from the football world as well. I mean, those are um right now um right now a lot of basketball going around this week. Obviously, um, when you look at the last um. Last week, I mean, like a lot of people look at the biggest headlines here, and and of course, if you look at my top twenty three on the blog at Sammy semicolon um, oh sorry, Adam Saginaw Bay forty six fifty at blogspot dot com. Um, the top twenty three really looks at the rankings this week. Um, obviously, when you look at some teams that have, have been going up and going down lately. Um, obviously, to me, when I look at from the boys perspective, um. We'll get to the basketball in a little bit here, but um, but a lot of changes to look at here. Obviously, um, let's go to our big story here. Um, it's football. Um, Royal Oak is looking for a new head football coach. Um, as the coach Ray McMahon left the um program, it was a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, I found out about it recently. Um, McMahon stepped down. I mean, a couple weeks ago, and when you look at Royal Oak, I mean, under his watch, Royal Oak was twenty five and forty nine. Um, he came into the program in 2013. Um, you know, of course, um, you know, he was really instrumental in bringing in the youth level. I mean, bringing the youth levels to Royal Oak. I mean, like, um, you really look at what, um, the youth programs that Royal Oak's been doing. Also the, um, you know, the sub RC programs. Um, but when you look at the record, you know, 25 and 49, you know, that's not going to get the job done. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, when you look at Royal Oak, this is a team that really has, um, you know, this is a football team that's really had um, a lot of down years. I mean, they have made the playoffs twice, um, <coughs> you know, under McMahon. Um, I know that they got there in 2017. Um, though when you look at the Ravens, I mean, here's a team that's got – I mean, when we look at the Ravens, they've really, really struggled. Um, last year, they went 2-7. and seven. Um, <laughs> Just, you know, they had some really weird um, things happen. I mean, like, obviously, you move Mikael Jenkins, the quarterback. Um, at times, you had Hudson Seidel, who's a really good quarterback in his own, <laughs> in his own, um, you know, own, own parts, obviously. So, when you really look at it here, just really – really interesting you know what i mean like um it was really it was really odd um but royal oak you know they've had their issues with their arch rivals berkeley and ferndale um i know that um the um battle of the um the new street sign trophy um <coughs> known as the battle of woodward of course the um that trophy really has um the battle of um you have Lexington Boulevard on one side. You have Cattelp on the other side. Um, Berkeley's really had Royal Oaks number as a blade. Um, and then you look at um, and they've managed to they man and look at what Berkeley's been doing the last few years. I mean, like you know they made the playoffs. I mean, like um, last two years. I mean, like obviously that's where Royal Oak wants to be at. You know what I mean? And I know that rivalry very well, and also their rivalry with Ferndale. Um, so, it's an interesting, um, <coughs> but I know McMahon wants to focus on a lot on his family as well. I mean, like, obviously, and I understand that. But um, when you look at the Royal Oak program right now, and I wish McMahon the best, and I, 
and I wish McMahon the best of luck, you know, the best of wishes. Um, so now I'm going to look at the Royal program as a whole. I mean, you got kids there. I mean, you, you really got kids there that are, um, you know, you know, that are, um, you got athletes at Royal. I mean, like the problem has been, you know, is football their main sport? I mean, that's the big question. Um, obviously you get, you're going to lose a player like Jesse Hosington, who has been a really, really good standout. Um, but then you do have Makai Jenkins, you got Hudson Settle coming back. Your line's okay. Um, I mean, like, but when you look at program strength, it's a big concern. Um, obviously, when you look at Royal Oak, um, that's the thing you got to address is your depth. You got to address, you got to address, um, you know, you, you got to address a lot of things. And Royal Oak, you know, this is this could be a good job for you. You know what I mean? This could be a good job for you. I mean, like who who um, I'm not sure where the athletic department Royal Oak's gonna go with this hire. I'm not real sure. Um, if they go in house or if they go outside, um, I I really think right now, um, and this is my own opinion. I'm not gonna be, you know, I'm not gonna be an influencer and say you know what I mean, like um where I think they should go, but I think a, a, cha- a new face would be a really interesting direction to go. I mean, obviously, when you look at Royal Oak, um, it's a great job to have. It's a great job. You got great kids there. I mean, you know, you got you got something, and you're in a division where it's favorable for you. I mean, even though you got Berkeley and Ferndale going to be in the newly designed gold division, um, I think when you look at the division you're in, it, it's very favorable for you to do very well. And I think that's a good um, indicator. And I think that would be for a new coach to come in there and say, you know what, I want my own program there. I mean, the thing for the thing is also you're going to have to really install your program not only in the varsity levels, but you got to install your program in the middle school levels and also in the um, in the youth levels. And I think that's the big thing. You know what I mean? That's the big, big thing when you look at building a program. It's not just building just the varsity program. You got to build the junior varsity program. You got to build the freshman program. You got to have your program installed middle school levels, and you got to have your um, program installed in the um, in the mute levels. And, you know, I really think, you know, when you look at Royal Oak, I mean, I thought McMahon did a really good job at that. Um, building the program through the levels. Now, the talent has not been there. I mean, I mean, Royal Oaks going to have to rely a lot on hard work, um, hard work and dedication. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at Royal Oak, I mean, like, it's it's a, um, I mean, it's a great area. I mean, it's a great area, great community down there. I mean, but when you really look at Royal Oak, I mean, like, um, as a program, there, if you want to make Royal Oak into a powerhouse, you're going to have to, you're going to have to build them up. You're going to have to coach them up. And I think, you know, and especially you're going to have to deal with Berkeley. You're going to have to deal with um, Ferndale in that division. That's not going to be an easy thing at all, whoever, for whoever the new coach is going to be. So so I'm not sure where they're going to go um, when it comes to this hire. But obviously when you look at it from a football perspective, um, it wouldn't surprise me if they go outside. Um outside the box, it really wouldn't surprise me if they do. Um, but it also wouldn't surprise me if they go inside. I mean, you know, in-house. I mean, obviously, when you look at Royal Oak, um, you know, I don't know, you know, when you look at the offense they ran, um, mostly like a power offense. I mean, like, I, I just don't know if that was a um, – when you do a power fo- – when you run power football, it's it's you got to have the linemen. You got to have the linemen. You got to have the – um you got to have the bodies and you know i think when you look at royal oak i mean like when i look at their their personnel obviously you got a quarterback in hudson Seidel, really good pocket passer um can run it you know and then Mikai jenkins at running back um i think if you change the offense around a little bit i really think this could be if you spread it out more and i think royal oak needs to and i think this is my own opinion i think royal oak needs to spread it out more um, I think that, um, 
you know, maybe get maybe especially develop their wide receivers, develop their um, you know, develop their um secondary of course on the defensive side of the football. Um, but I really think you know what I mean when if if you are a power team, you know, and if you want to be a power team, you're gonna have to not only run the ball efficient efficiently, but you're gonna have to also create that balance. And I don't know if it's it's really difficult in this in this game now. We see a lot of teams going more RPO, going more spread, zone read, off the pistol formation. Um, I think, don't be surprised whoever the new coach is could change the offense up. I, I, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, because, you know, when you look at this, what happened at Oxford, um, obviously with um, with Zach Lyon taking over, he really changed the offense up a little bit. He went to more of that um, – he went more to that zone read. He went more to that um, pistol formation look. You know what I mean? To go along with power football as well. I mean, I mean, power can work, but you got to add more to it. And that's what I'm trying to say here. That's what I'm trying to say here. Defensively, you know, Royal Oak, they got the pieces. Um, they got the talent. But, you know, they've, they've given up a lot of points. And that's really unusual for this group. Really unusual and that's why they went two and seven this year was because they gave a lot of points. Now I know um, the divisions this year are split up more, more evenly, especially with the addition of Harper Woods into the league. Um, now there's four divisions: Royal Oak and the Gold. I think Royal Oak's got a great chance here to um, do some damage. You know, now you're going to have to go through Ferndale. You're going to have to go through. Berkeley, obviously, your two rivals. Um, and I think that's where you're going to judge Royal Oak by, is can they beat their two arch rivals? And that's the big question. And then you have Avondale in there. We know Avondale's been really good. Um, I mean, in the past, I know Corey Bell really well. Um, how they got in the playoffs this year, um, I know it still um, bothers my co-host, Ian Locke. Um I, how they got in the playoffs, but I'll tell you how they got in the playoffs. It's pretty simple. I mean, Division Three wasn't that good last year. It really wasn't. Um, you know, and that's how they got in. And Avondale played a tough enough schedule in the blue, you know, to get themselves into the postseason. So that's how Avondale got in last year. So with Royal Oak, you know what I mean? I'm curious to see how their non-league is going to work. Because that's going to be the key for Royal Oak season. Is going to be, can Royal Oak find a way to, um, you know, can Royal Oak find a way not only win your games in league, but also win your games outside of league. I mean, that's going to be the challenge for um, who the new coach is going to be there. Um, obviously, you lose a guy. I mean, obviously, losing a coach like Ray McMahon, you know, who's been there nearly eight years. Um, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna sting a little bit. It's gonna sting, but you know, um, but, but you know, uh, I think these kids are gonna adapt. I really think they're gonna adjust. Um, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna take some time to adjust to a new coach. And obviously that's gonna be the challenge that Royal Oak and that, um, Ravens program is gonna face. I mean, like obviously going through change and I know change can be really hard, especially early. Um, you know, so that's something to really keep a close eye on at Royal Oak is who's going to be, whoever comes in there, don't be surprised if he changes a lot of things there. I mean, obviously that's something that Royal Oak needs right now. And, you know, they've been, it's been really difficult over there the last few years over there at Royal Oak. It's been really, really difficult. And Whoever takes that job will have a tremendous challenge ahead of them. I mean, especially when you're in a division with Berkeley, Ferndale, um, Avondale. You know, those three teams are going to be the, most likely to be the top teams in the gold division this year. So that's something to really keep an eye on. Um, but you do have pieces there. I mean, Makai Jenkins there. You got Hudson Seidel there. Um, your, line is, okay, your line will be interesting to keep an eye on. You got questions at the secondary and the wide receiver spot, um, secondary and the defense side of the football. Um, linebackers, a big question mark. Um, there's a lot of questions. 
you know, there's a lot of questions for Royal Oak um, coming in, whoever the new coach is going to be. Um, so we're going to keep a real close eye on this, um, on this situation. I mean, we're going to keep a really, really close eye on this situation. Um, let's go now from football um, to now um, to boys basketball a little bit here. Um, obviously, this week, um, a lot of things went down. Obviously, we had the Martin Luther King Classic. Um, today is Martin Luther King Day, so happy Martin Luther King Day to everybody out there. Um, let's look at, of course, that classic, obviously, uh, more in depth a little bit. Um, Groves and Harper Woods, um, to me, was probably the, um, the play of Harper Woods has been really, I've been really surprised at the play of Harper Woods, and a lot of it is not in a good way. I mean, you look at Harper Woods this week, um, they were blown out by Lake Orion, and they were blown, and they lost the Groves on that Saturday. So when you look at Harper Woods, it's basically like a welcome initiation to OA. Now they did beat Farmington; that is a huge win for them. But their last two games against the White, they have not fared well, and it doesn't get any better for them because they got to play Boonville Hills next. So you're basically playing three of the top teams in the White Division. And you've already gotten blown out by Lake Orion. Um, you gotten blown out by, um, and you had a tough loss to um, to Groves, of course. Um, and then you have Bloomfield Hills. So if you're Coach Julian Porter, or Coach Juan Porter, um, obviously you gotta find you gotta find out who's going to be your top scorer. I mean, is it Julian Young? Is it you know? I mean, they got pieces there. But they've got to figure things out, some things out over there. Because that's the biggest problem Harper Woods has. And you really look at that schedule, yes, people are going to say, well, the gold is is one of the easiest divisions. No, it's not. And you really look at the teams that are in that division. Um, you got a Pontiac team that is looking really good right now, um, despite their 0 2 start. Um, I really like. Um, I think it's Davian Young. He had 37 against Stony Creek. Um, I mean, like, um, and we know Stony Creek's a very good defensive team. Um, and then you have Royal Oak, who is much better than what the record indicates. Jesse Hosington's done really well. Dylan Hoppen has done really well for them as well. I mean, they've finally figured some things out over there. Royal Oak is a dark horse team. I mean, and then you look at and then we mentioned, and then Avondale's much improved. Um, and then you have Ferndale University under Coach Josh Nix. His team is much improved. So if you think, if Harvard Woods thinks they're going to run, they're going to cakewalk this division, you got a whole other thing coming. And right now, when I look at Harper Woods right now, um, to be honest with you, I think this team's in a whole lot of trouble because. When I look at that division, that goal division is now wide open because of their struggles. Harper Woods, we know that they're a proud basketball program. They won a state title in 2014. Um, but right now, they, they're, they're, have, they're having an interesting time adjusting to, um, to Tuan Porter. They're having a really interesting time. But until they figure out rules there at Harper Woods, um, this is going to be a result right now. And this is why they're struggling. Because they don't really have that true score. Um, they, I don't know if they've adjusted well to Porter's system. You know, Now, last year, you know, when they were in the Michigan Metro, Mega Conference, um, they had their struggles. I mean, this was a team that really struggled last year, you know, finding, you know, even though they were young, though, but I know they're trying to adjust the life in the OA. That's really difficult. You know, OA is a much tougher conference than the Michigan Mega Conference. And right now, I think Harper Woods is really experiencing that right now. Because when you look at when they get in the league play, you know, you're playing against really good teams in Pontiac. You're playing Royal Oak, Avondale. You're playing, um, you know, Ferndale University. I think those teams are... Those teams are much improved right now. 
those teams are better than what their record indicates. So when I look at Harper Woods is um in Harper Woods's case, they've got to step up. They've got to really step up if they want to do some damage. Um, they want to win this division. So if I'm Coach Juwan Porter, you know, you're gonna have to really say to your kids, hey, th- th- we got ourselves into this. Now we got to get ourselves out. You know, and if you want to be competitive, you want to win this league. You want to do well in your district. Your district's not easy. Um, you got to really buy in to what I'm doing. So that's what I would say right now if I'm Coach um, Tuan Porter right now at Harper Woods. Um, but that was a team I really didn't expect to struggle this badly um, in their first year journey into the OAA. It was Harper Woods. I didn't expect that. So... But that's the team that's really got to improve if they want to do very well in the gold division. Um, we talked, obviously, the rest of the gold. Pontiac, um, Davy and Young at 37 um, for Pontiac in their game against um, Stony Creek. Um, but Pontiac's 0-2 right now. I mean, they've been very competitive. I mean, they lost by one to Carlton Airport in overtime. Um I'm curious to see what where this where that program goes. I mean, Pontiac's got athletes. That's for sure. Um, do I think they could challenge for the gold? Sure, absolutely. They were in the, they were in the title race last year. Um, unfortunately for them, they lost to Rochester. I mean, but they're they're in the thick of it. Um, Royal Oak, another team, really like to play at Jesse Hosington lately. Um, really like Dylan Hopman's play lately. They've been really competitive. That Bloomby Hills game, give him a pass there. I mean, like, you know what? I mean, I would give him a pass, though, with the Bloomby Hills game. Bloomby Hills is really good this year. <laughs> so, that's my take on them. Royal Oak, I mean, getting better. Really like the direction they're going. Um, Burnley University, like the direction they're going. <laughs> Thought to be a little more competitive with Groves, though. But, unfortunately, you know, it is what it is. So, but I really like the direction of Coach Josh Nix has that program going. Um, you know, the two and four um, right now. I mean, I really like the direction they're at. Um, I mean, like, so, and Avenue, Pat Clancy. <laughs> I still can't figure out with his team how they upset Troy. I mean, 49 48. I mean, I still can't believe that. I mean, I, I'm at a loss for words here because I know Troy was going to have a really down year, but I knew Avondale was better than they were last year. But to see that score, didn't expect that. Really didn't. But I got to get credit to Coach Pat Clancy and his team. They've got some players. Um, really like that team over there at Avondale. Um, it'll be really interesting, especially how they go going forward. I mean, Clancy's done a really good job with that program. He has done a wonderful job with that program. Um, so with Avondale, you know, that's, um, they're a good team. I really like that team. I really do. Um, let's go down from the gold to the blue. Um, Rochester really is a team that, um, Rochester, we know, um, Coming off an impressive win against Davison, Amon Hassani had 35 points um, in that game down up there at Davison. Um, Rochester's a good team. I mean, you know, I think, you know, when you look at Rochester, I um, really like where they're at right now. Now, the rest of the division is wide open. I mean, if the second place team in that division, I thought would have been Berkeley. But they've had some really interesting losses. But they did come back from a 22-point deficit against um, against Madison Heights Bishop Foley and won that game. Um, really happy that um <laughs> that they got they found a game at the last minute um, and played that game. Um, though when I look at Berkeley, you know I don't know if they're the second place team right now. I think the second place team right now in that division is Oxford. Um, Oxford's had a, they played a murder's robe of schedule this week. I mean, traveling t- 
to Washtenaw County play a very good Arbor Prep team. Um, lost that one. It was a really tough one. Um, but then they, they bounced back, went to Livonia, knocked off Livonia Clarenceville um, behind Bryce Essman's 22 points. Um, <clears throat> so when I look at Oxford, they're an improved team. I got to give Troy Athens a lot of props, especially with um, <coughs> the fact that we had six guys, and they beat Sony Creek, a really good Sony Creek team. Um, I mean, like, so you got to look at Troy Athens and say maybe they're maybe maybe the second best team. Southfield's hard to figure out, especially because they've been really struggling. They're at three and seven right now. Um, they beat West Bloomfield; it's a huge win for them. But they've lost two straight, um, where they've allowed over sixty. Um, albeit it's the River Rouge and Harperwood Chandler Park Academy, both teams are really good this year. Um, so interesting where Coach Terrell Buchanan's got that um that got that team going. Um, Seaholm really been struggling. Um, they did knock off Bishop Foley. Um, I did a pop. I do forget. I did forget it was Royal Oak Shrine who played Berkeley, not um Madison Heights Bishop Foley. Um, so my apologies. Um, it was Royal Oak Shrine who played Berkeley. Um, Seahawks coming off on a good win against um Madison Heights Bishop Foley, winning twenty nine twenty three. Seahawks' problem is, I'm curious to see how they deal without John Chinosis. Um, he's been out for a couple of days. Um, should come back pretty soon. Um. <laughs> So that's something to really keep a close eye on going forward for Berkeley. I think that's something to really, really keep a close eye on. Um, so when I look at the blue, obviously Rochester is the top team. But I think Oxford right now is the number two team. Then it's Berkeley, Athens, um, Southfield, and then um, Seahome. So that's right now my take on the blue this week. In the white division, Bloompy Hills, obviously, top-ranked team. But Lake Orion is a team to really watch. They've gotten a lot of things figured out. I mean, Coach Jose Andrade's taken over the program. They're 4-1 and one with, with Andrade's coaching the program. Alden Ritt had a nice game against Harper Woods. Um, DJ Morrill's been playing well. Malachi Granberry's been playing well. Um, obviously, when you look at the Dragons, um... You know, obviously, when you look at Lake Orion, this is a team that they're playing loose. I mean, they're playing, you know, they're playing for each other. And you look at this Dragon team, that is probably the most dangerous thing you got to look at. Is when you are a team that's playing with nothing to lose, and you're playing loose, that's a recipe for success. That always has it. So... Lake Orion right now under Coach Jose Andrade is four and one, and that's and that says a lot. That says a lot. Um, Troy, it's hard to figure out with them. Um, I just can't figure them out. I mean, you're coming off a of loss to Avondale, really difficult loss. Um, I can't figure this team out. Um, Groves. They're starting to roll a little bit. I mean, it looks like maybe Coach Benny White's team is starting to figure some things out. Um, you know, starting to um to go to go on the upward swing a little bit. You know what I mean? Just um, and I think that's a huge step. I mean, this has been a program that's been around 500, um, but they've managed to um <laughs> get out to a really good start. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, they've had some um. Issues within their program, but they've gotten it figured out. And Benny White's done a really good job building that program back. So that's a program that's been rising. Stony Creek is another one. I like Tavares. I mean, like, what well, he's been playing. He's been playing really good basketball. Peyton Romler's another one. Um, Leo Kent's another one as well. I mean, Coach Steve Norgrove's done really well with the talent he's got over at Stony Creek. So I'm curious to see how this division's going to go. Obviously, Bloomfield Hills with the with Adam Chetz right now has been playing really well for them right now. Um, I'm curious to see how league play is going to look like for them. Um, so that's something to really keep a close close eye on. And then let's go to the red. Um, 
Ferndale, obviously, has been playing really well. North Farmington, we know they've they've made some state a ton of statements. I mean, knocked off, da- blew out Davison. Um, here, see that North Farmington Ferndale game on Tuesday. That's going to be a really good game. Um, Clarkson, of course, coming off that win against Oak Park. Um, Oak Park, um, curious to see how they respond. Um, they got they they're a really good basketball team, with especially led by Ashton Henderson. Um, Clarkson, of course, um, Keegan Wasilla had a really nice game. Nate Steinman, um, they're not a healthy group right now over there, Clarkson. They're really not. But once they figure things out, it'll be all right. Um, West Bloomfield, Farmington are both really struggling right now. Um, both of them are really struggling right now. Adams is experiencing life in the red right now. Um, I think Adams will be fine. Um, I'm not pressing any panic button on Coach Jerry Thomas's team. So I really think it's going to come down to is North Farmington, um, Ferndale, then Clarkson's your wild card. So those are the teams I'm really keeping a close eye on um, going forward in the red division. Okay, now let's go from the red division. Um, let's go from boys basketball. I want to talk girls basketball a little bit. Um, obviously, when you look at the blue, um, you look at Harper Woods, they're out to an 8 0 start. Um, but they really haven't been tested. I mean, besides Farmington, and they won that game by eight, they've really been beating teams pretty badly. I mean, I mean, like, you look at the the Blue Division, I mean, like, you know, Ferndale's going to have their struggles this year. Um, Pontiac's going to have their struggles this year. Um, Oak Park, we know they got issues scoring, and I know they're on COVID protocol right now. Um, so when I look at... Harper Woods, um, they're beating the teams that they're supposed to be, and they're beating them decisively. Now when you get, what I want to know is January 25th is going to be the day we know a lot about Harper Woods. And the reason why I say this is because I think Seaholm is a better, I think Seaholm's a better team. Because you look at what Seaholm's done. I mean, they, despite the fact that they, they, um, they found a game with Oak, with Macomb, Dakota, and that's a really difficult game. Even though they got blown out, I was really happy they found that game because I, I, I got them a way to get them better. I really like what Coach Chris Manchester has. Um, I got into a little debate with Scott Bernstein, um, the other day about Seaholm, and I said, you know, and I put Seaholm in my top 10 in Oakland County. He asked me why. Because you look at Seaholm, the fact that their two losses were to Groves and to um, Macomb, Dakota, they've really got some players to keep an eye on. Shay Manchester, Maggie Liebler, they got others in there as well. I mean, like, Chris Manchester's got a program over there. He's got a team over there. So when I look at Seaholm, um, obviously, this is a team to really watch out for. And I think they're going to be Harper Woods' biggest challenger all season long. Now, I know Harper Woods still has to go to Farmington. You know, that'll be really interesting. But um, I think, to me right now, Seaholm stands as the team to beat in that blue division. Now, people are going to say, well, what about Harper Woods? I mean, like, Harper Woods is undefeated. But Harper Woods really hasn't proven to me, you know, how they would handle, how they handle being tested. I mean, Farmington's pretty much the team that, you really got to look at when it com- when it comes to the eyeball test. So that's a team to really keep an eye on, you know, is, you know, Harper Woods. I mean, like, to see if they've been battle-tested. I mean, that 8-0 and start, that could be really deceiving. So if you're Harper Woods, you got to make sure the 8-0 record is proof and not – and, I mean, like, I mean, look at what happened for New University. For New University was undefeated coming in, and they got blown up by Farmington. You know, they were blown out by Farmington, 51-27. And, and, you know, we know who Ferndale University is right now. You know, they had a real struggle with Farmington. So, there's a lot of questions. You know, sometimes records can be really deceiving. You just got to look at the teams you played and you got to look at the teams that you've, um, that you, the body of work. I mean, obviously, Seaholm sits at 6-2. and two. Harper Woods is right now 8-0. No, but you got to look at the teams they played. He almost played a much tougher schedule than Harper Woods is. 
So that's something to really keep an eye on. That's why I said January 25th is going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a heck of a game down there in Harper Woods between Seaholm and Harper Woods. It'll be a heck of a game down there. So that's the K in the Wash in the Blue Division is that game January 25th. Um, obviously the um, when you look at the rest of the division, obviously we talk Ferndale, Pontiac, um, <laughs> have really been struggling. Um, Avondale's been a weird team to figure out. Um, they've been really odd to figure out lately. Um, Farmington right now is third right now in the blue behind Harper Woods and, um, North, uh, at Harper Woods and, um, Seahome. Um, and then you look at, obviously, with, um, Ferndale University, middle of the pack, um, followed by, um, Avondale, um, and then, um... <laughs> So that's my take on the blue right now. I mean, right now, to me, it, it looks like still it's a three-team race, but Farmington right now is playing a little bit behind the eight ball, especially when they, they're lost to Harper Woods but and to Seaholm as well. I mean, like, so So when I look at Farmington, they're clearly the third-place team in that division. Um, Fernand University is the fourth-place um, team in that division, um, followed by Avondale, Oak Park, um, I followed by Fernandale University, um, at Avenue Oak Park, um, Pontiac, and then um, Ferndale. So that's my take on the Blue Division right now. Um, obviously, you know, the league still goes through. Um, the game January twenty fifth is going to be the day we know if Harper Woods is for real, um, or if um. Because I think Seaholm is a much better team right now. Um, they played a tougher schedule than Harper Woods, so we'll see if we'll see if Harper Woods is for real in that game. Um, we'll see if they're for real. Um, the white division. I mean, the white looks like it's a cla- It could be. It's going to come down to Lake Orion and um Rochester. People look at this these two teams. Obviously, you know, you look at Lake Orion. They're coming off a um. Good week, especially on that win on Friday night, knocking off Troy Athens um, without Maddie Ebert. Um, that is a huge statement there. Um, Chloe Wiegers has really played well for Coach Bob Bridges and his team. Um, so when you look at Lake Orion, I mean, people are going to say, well, is this team, you know, they got players. They got they got depth. I mean, you look at this Dragon team, they, they can beat you in so many different ways. I mean, so there's a lot to like with this Lake Orient team. There really is. Um, you know, you got you got Maddie Ebert, you got Kylie Heck, you got um you got Olivia Pavlovsky, you got you got Audrey Richmeyer, you got um you know Chloe Wiegers, you got a Grace Sullivan, I mean, you got Ryan Palazak who's been playing who's been playing pretty well lately. Um there are a lot of pieces on this Lake Orient team that could be that is really dangerous. I mean this Dragon team went on is really tough to beat. Um, so it'd be really interesting to see what happens with Lake Orion going forward. But there's a lot to like with that Dragon team over there at Lake Orion. There's a lot to like. Um, Rochester, obviously, Alice Mack. Um, I think she could be newcomer of the year. I mean, that's how much of an impact she's made all year long for Coach Bill Thurston and his team. I mean... You got obviously Natalie Race there. You got Pleasant there. You got Norgrove there. Um, I mean, like, but Alice Max has really stood out. I mean, really been the X factor there for Rochester. Um, you know, teams have got to got to guard her. You got to respect her. You know what I mean? And that's really difficult. You know, especially because it's rare. Especially, and they don't have just one six footer. They got two six footers, and that says a lot. You know, when you have that much size, you know what I mean? That that can work in a lot of favors if you're Rochester. I mean, they got a bright future ahead of them. I mean, I mean Rochester's got a real bright future ahead of them. I mean, there's a lot to like with them. Um, North Farmington, to me, right now, looks like the third best team. Now, when I look at the Raiders, Tella Leffler, um, you know, her being out in that Lake Orion game was really huge. Um, but she's came back with a vengeance. Um Way against Adams, um, and also had a big game against Oxford as well. Um, North Farmington is as good as Sell Leffler takes him. People look at obviously with the Raiders, um, you know, 
you got Penelope Query there. You got um, but everything starts and ends with Sella Leffler, and I think that's clear now. When you look at the stats lately, you know, Leffler's been the key for North Farmington. You know, I mean, like, if, and if there's a team out there that, that, that beats them with Leffler, then that's great. You know what I mean? Rochester, you know, beat them obviously with Leffler, but this North Farmington is as good as it takes with Sal Leffler. Um, you know, Leffler's the one that carries that team. And that's the bottom line. And I know she was missed heavily in that Lake Oregon. Um, she was missed heavily in that Lake Oregon. And you look at North Farmington now, I mean, like, you know, if they're going to be as good, I mean, Leffler's going to have to carry him. You know, they're gonna, she's going to have to carry him. No offense to Penelope Curry, but I think Sel Leffler's going to be the one that has to carry him. Bottom line. Um, Oxford, obviously, the Peyton Richter injury hurts him. Um, you know, Miranda, it's going to put a lot more pressure on Miranda Winepco. Um, they still got some really good players. I mean, like Addison Hopseller, uh, Nevada Wood. Um, you know, there's, I mean, like there's some others on that team as well that are solid as well for Coach Rachel Pryor. Um, so when I look at North, I look at Oxford, you know, you know they're going to have to adjust, and that's going to be a real challenge for Coach Rachel Pryor and their team. It's going to be a real interesting challenge. Um, Troy Athens, a lot of experience. There's a lot to like with them, Jillian Siak. Um, Ella must have had a really rough game against Lake Orion. Um, but the play of Delilah Clark, she had a, um, oh, Rebecca Delilah, my bad. Um, she had a big game against Lake Orion, had 10 points in that one. Um, so when I look at Troy Athens, experience matters. Experience matters. And I look at the, I look at Athens, you know, experience, it truly does matter. So that's very interesting to keep an eye on. Um, Adams, you know, Madison Kessman, Abby Dranick's been playing much better. Um, that's been the key for, um, coach, um, for Joe Mal or coach Malberg all year long. Um, you know, it's going to be the play of Adams is getting better. I mean, there's a lot to like with them. Um, coach Joe Malberg's done. Um, I really like what, um, you know, but the key is going to be Abby Dranick. If Dranick plays well, Adams plays well, you know, Kessman and Dranick are both on. You know what I mean? Adams is going to play very well. That's my line. Um, Berkeley, you know, Nolan Malvey, you know, you got Ashley Loon there, um, Jillian Gomes. Um, they've been really struggling. Um, it's been a real difficult task for them. Um, you know, so when you look at Berkeley, I mean, they've been really been struggling. Um and then there's Bloompy Hills. I mean, they got a lot of young pieces there. Um, Ashley Fordner there. Um, they're they've been really been struggling. So when I look at the white division right now, um, to me right now it looks like it's a two team race. But I know both teams still got to go to North Farmington, Lake Orion, and um, Rochester. They both got to go to North Farmington. That's never an easy place to play. Um. But when I look at the white right now, I still think Lake Orion's got just enough because of their experience. I mean, Maddie Ebert, you got Chloe Wiegers, you got Grace Sullivan, you have um, Audrey Wishmeyer, you have um, Olivia Pavlovsky. I mean, they've got enough. They got a lot of, and you got Taylor Dinder there as well. I mean, you got enough depth, you know, that can do some damage. All Lake Orion has to do is just be themselves. You know what I mean? That's that's Lake Orion's biggest. Weakness right now is sometimes they get a little uncharacteristic, and you know if they can just take care of what they're what they're more than capable of doing, this is gonna be a great basketball team. It's gonna be a really good basketball team. Rochester, you know, I mean, obviously you got the you got size up front. That's the big. That's the bottom line. With Rochester, they got a lot of size up front. So, and then you look at North Farmington, obviously with Leffler. I mean, like um, Leffler is gonna be the one that's the key stretch for North Farmington because if Leffler's not in the lineup. They're a completely different team. Um, Adams, we know they got their young team, but they're getting better. Troy Athens, we know got experience. Um, Berkeley's been struggling, and then you have Bloomfield Hills, who's been, um, you know, really been struggling as well. So, you know, and then you have Oxford as well. I forgot to mention them. Um, Oxford, obviously, with the um, Richter injury that hurts them. Um, but you got Miranda Winepco there, and got a is somebody else got to step up over there? So that's going to be the key. 
in the white division. But right now, when I look at the white right now, I still think it's Lake Orion and Rochester right now are the two best teams in the white division right now. Um, let's go to the red now. Um, West Bloomfield, um, they've been rolling. Um, I said some things last week, you know what I mean? That, um, and I still meant it. Um, West Bloomfield is a really good team. They're really good. I mean, that's that's not a, a, a question. They are really good. I mean, both Davis sisters. You have both. Um, you have both Hendrick sisters. My own Hooper. They got depth. They got a lot of things to like with that team. <laughs> they run a real good system. I like what Coach Jeremy McAllister's been doing um, with that program. Um, they're just rolling. They're just rolling right now. Um, Clarkston, you know, obviously, man, of course, he had 31 against Stony Creek. Um, Stony Creek, and we know what Stony Creek has. Um, but Sikorsky and Hadley are going to be the two keys for Coach Aaron Goodnow's team going forward. Um, you know, they still got to find some production inside it. They can do that. That's going to make Clark's net more dangerous. Um, Stony Creek, we know what, um, what Team Feinbaum has with, um, Fulton La Prairie's, Mia Carson. Um, obviously with Stony Creek, um, <laughs> this is a team that's got, they're going to be fine. I'm not pressing any panic buttons on Stony Creek. I'm not pressing any. They're going to be just fine. I, I, I really think Stony Creek, they're going to be just fine. Um, and then you look at, obviously, um, in the red, you got Groves. Groves has been a really hard team to figure out because, and I talked to Scott Bernstein about them the other day, and he asked me what was Groves' record. I told him, well, they're six and four. They had some really rough losses. They were blown up by West Bloomfield, but the loss to Royal Oak is the one that's mind-boggling. Because <laughs> Royal Oak's down this year. They're really down. Um, lost a lot to graduation last year. Um, and you got a player in Caitlin Sanders who's been really good for them lately. I mean, Destiny McCurdy's been really good for them lately. But <laughs> it's inexcusable for them to... It's inexcusable for them to basically. Um, it's it's really uh, that was a really bad loss for them. I mean, and I'm not knocking anything on Coach Brian Sapata's team. I know Royal Oak's a defensive first team, but still, but still, I mean, like that's not a good, not a good loss if you coach um Allison Heidi. You know, that's a really rough loss for them. So. That's something to really, really watch is, you know, to really keep a close eye on is going forward. Is Ken Groves, you know, bounce back from this? They had a really rough week. Um, now, I'm not knocking anything on Royal Oak. Royal Oak, I think, is getting better. I really like what Coach Brian about is doing with that young group. But for Groves, losing those two games might be a wake-up call for them because it tells you, you know, you got to come out and play every week. You can't come out and just play, come out and play like certain games. You got to come out and play every week. And the West Bloomfield game, you might want to give him a pass. But when I look at Groves right now, you know, Scott Bernstein asked me, why didn't you put Groves in your top 10? You know, I, I, there's a lot of concerns I have with Coach Allison Heidi's team right now. There's, just, there's a lot of concerns, um, obviously. So that's something to really keep an eye on. Um, Troy. Um, you know what, Troy, Kendall Zider, they're going to be as good as Kendall Zider takes them. Um, I know you got Charlotte Sobaka on that team. They really miss Alyssa Mantusa. I mentioned that for weeks now. Um, but when I look at Troy, um, here's a team that they're going to rely a lot on Kendall Zider. I know they got the young, they got another Zider on that, on the Embarcy team as well, but but when I look at Troy, Kendall Zider is going to have to be the one that performs night in, night out. If they do, you know what? I mean, like, Troy is going to be in games. Like, they were in that in the hard-fought win against Royal Oak the other day. So, when I look at Troy, they're going to be as good as Kendall Zider takes. That's the bottom line. Because she can only do so much. You know, her and Sabaka can only do so much. That's the bottom line. They need others to step up. 
They need others to step up, and I think that's been the biggest problem for Coach Julius Porter and his team. Um, is who's going to be that third player? Who's that third player besides Zider and Soboka? That's the big question over there for Troy. Um, Royal Oak, we mentioned earlier, I, 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 they're getting better. I mean, I, they're getting much better. They're improving. I mean, this is a really, really good team. Um, I, I think with them, you know, bottom line is this is a team that they're going to get better. I mean, I really like where Coach O'Brien Zapata has his team at right now. Um, I think they're I think they're going to be just fine. I, I'm not pressing any panic buttons, Royal Oak, right now. Nothing, nothing, nada. And then there's Southfield A and T. I mean, how do I start with A and T? Because when I look at A and T, I mean. They look good when they're blowing bad teams out. And then when they play good teams, they get blown out. So it's hard to explain the Warriors with Coach Akria Coltrane's team. It's really hard to explain them. Really hard. Because I was looking at early in the year, I'm saying, okay, how's Southfield doing this? They're blowing teams out. I mean, like, maybe this could be the year that they turn it around. I mean, they got a player in Jalen Austin. They got a young nucleus. But then when they play good teams, you know what I mean? Look what happens to them. They get blown out. It's hard to explain. It's, I don't know. It's hard to explain a t right now. It really is. It's really hard to explain Coach Creed Coltrane's team right now. I mean, bottom line is, with a and is they've got to figure ways out to be competitive against good teams. And right now, they're not. If I'm a and right now, you know, I know you're young. But you got to show up against good teams. I mean, you're in the red for a reason. I mean, you look at teams, you know, and then ask me this question here with A&T. Do I think they could do what with A&T? Here's my question for them. How would A&T do if they were in the white? Or if they were in the um, blue? If they were in the white? A&T, to me, looks like a white team playing in the red division right now. That's how I view A&T right now. Looking at their scores. Looking at, you know... The fact that you're getting blown out. I mean, a t to me, you know, right now, if and I know a lot of people in Southfield don't want to hear this, but I think you got to consider going down from the red to the white next year. You got to consider it. Because right now, I'm looking at your team right now, and you're scoring, and you're getting blown out. You're getting blown out. You're getting blown out by Clarkston. You're getting blown out by Stony Creek. You're getting blown out by West Bloomfield. I mean, you got blown out by Groves. I mean, I mean, if you're coaching creative coaching, you got to consider it. You have to. You have to. That's the bottom line right now. When I look at A&T. It's just the stats prove to me that you're a white division team. And you're getting blown out by a lot of good basketball teams lately. You've been getting blown out. You beat the bad teams, but when you play a good team, you know, I don't know what to say. You know, with A&T. I'm at a loss for words. So, final thoughts on the red, obviously, when you look at the red division, um, you got West Bloomfield for sure at the top, Clarkston, Stony Creek. That Clarkson Stony Creek game was a really good game, by the way. That was a really good game. Um, followed by um Troy, Groves, um, Royal Oak, and then um and then A and T. So that's my take on the um on the red division. Um West Bloomfield's just on another world right now. Um <laughs> I mean Clarkson and Stony Creek are really are really good teams as well. Um, obviously, 
you know, and then you have Troy there as a wild card. Um, I think a perfect example when you look at the top um, 23 in both girls and boys basketball, um, it's for sure clear where each team lies right now. Um, and I think right now that's where um, these teams lie right now. Um, so I'm curious to see how girls basketball docket plays out. Um, a lot of great storylines, obviously, surrounding girls basketball. So um, that's something to really keep a close eye on. Um, other sports, obviously, cheerleading. Um, but underway, um, <laughs> in Rochester, won the Stony Creek Invitational. Um, you got to look at, obviously, with cheerleading, you got some of the best teams in the state of Michigan in the Red Division. Um, you know, with Troy, at, I mean, like with Rochester, with all three Rochesters, like Orion, um, obviously, you know, that's something to really keep an eye on. Um, Troy Atkins has been a really good program as well, some improving programs as well, like Oxford, Clarkston, to keep a real close eye on as well. Um, hockey, of course, obviously, you look at, um, you look at Lake Orion to me right now, looks like the best team in hockey right now. Um, even though Bloomby, even though Rochester United might have a strong say about it, um, Bloomby Hills as well, but that's something to really keep an eye on as we head into the, um, during the middle part of the season. Um, so that's something to really keep a close eye on going forward. Um, I mean, there's a lot to keep an eye on, obviously. So, all right, now my final thoughts this week, obviously, on the podcast. Um, obviously, we got a lot to look at this week. A lot of good games on the docket. North Farmington, Ferndale on Tuesday, and boys. Probably going to be really interesting. Um, and then the girls, they go in the league play, obviously. I mean, like, and then some league play starts for boys basketball this weekend, coming up on Friday. Um, some big league games, obviously. Um, some of them really stand out. Um, Lake Orion, Stony Creek, that'll be a really interesting game. Um, that's a game that stands out. Um, but obviously the game to watch for sure is North Farmington Ferndale on Tuesday night. That'll be a really good game between those two teams. So we'll see what happens going forward. Um, a lot to look forward to this past week. I mean, like also I encourage everybody also stay healthy. Um, you know, we know that the virus is still around and, you know, mask up, you know what I mean? So, and you know, so let's, let's see what happens this week. Um, all right, man, we're signing off here um, this week here on the podcast. Um, of course, you want to follow up on my blog. I'm at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, you really got to look at, uh, I mean, like, have a column on Royal Oak football, also on um, the top 23 for both boys and girls basketball. Um, for the latest update information, keep an eye on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, also on the O1 TV blog as well, so that's something to really keep an eye on as well. So, all right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care, everybody. Um, God bless everybody, and I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care, and see you all next week. God bless you